Let's see if she'll fire up. Woo! Look out. Good times. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me on this another little episode of this build. Today, we're sorting out all this little wiring stuff, okay? Because we uh, put the cold air intake in here, obviously in a stock car, that's where the battery sat. Now, uh, we have to relocate the battery somewhere else on the car, and what I've already done is just pull these wires off the starter motor just to get a bit of an idea of how I'm going to rework these wires. Um, and we'll get to that very shortly, but I just want to show you guys, I've actually been pretty busy putting some more of this car back together. As you can see, the, um, the dash is in. It's got just bolted in lightly there, just keeping it in place. The flock dash looks absolutely amazing in there. Um, even down to things like there's little holes that were down underneath the dash there that I had to um, to cover up. There is one little hole just there that's open. That's because I'll be running the battery cables through there into the cab, into the cabin. But I'm very happy with this flock dash. It's a bit rough in areas, but hey, it's a race car. Um, I'm not getting paid professionally to do this, so I'm quite happy with the way that's actually come out. Just a bit of fluff on there. Got our seat, it's not mounted, it's just sitting in there where I think about where it'll be going. Um, it may have to move a fraction here or there. Um, but I just put it in there just to get, get a bit of a gauge what it would be like with the, um, with the dash in there. Steering wheel will be replaced hopefully soon. But in the meantime, we will be relocating the battery from the engine bay into the cabin somewhere. I'm going to start getting this cable out. I went to JCAR and got a um, got a new cable, um, four gauge, same as what was in the car, some lugs, and then I also have, um, from when I was building my cart trailer, putting a bit of a power system in there, I've got a, um, a heavy duty gauge, or heavy duty crimp tool, which I can then use to crimp these together. So first things first, I'm going to just unwind this, crimp that on, and we'll start running some cable to get it mounted towards the back. And then we'll also have to drill holes for the uh, bracket down there to slip the battery in. All right, we've got the first one done. Nicely, just put a bit of heat shrink over there just to keep it all nice and tidy. That will be going through the front firewall onto the side or onto the starter motor to um, fire the car up. Now, before anyone asks, I did separate the starter solenoid, and what I did is I just ran a bit of extra cable um, from because it sits inside the airbox, and I just ran an extra bit of cable from the airbox back up around and then down to the starter motor to kick it on when it's time to start this thing. Um, and obviously then this will then provide the provide the juice um, for that so once it cools off a bit we'll thread it through and what I will be doing is in here down below I'm going to run the cable from that hole just there down along here and then back up and down the back so it's just one straight line but what I will do is I'll run it underneath that bracket there and then underneath here um, just to keep it somewhat sturdy and then along here I've got already put a rivet nut in there just to test the hole I'll just put a clip to keep it steady and then do that along down the back so I just want to get this cable on the starter motor first so then we can um, try and start the car to see if it's all good and I'll just thread the uh, I'll reattach the, the earth wire to the starter and then put that through and get the car fired up to make sure it's all good to go. Right. 
actually sit in there nicely, I think. Let's feed a bit more through because I don't know how much we need on the other side. Look very nice. Just running straight down the guts. And that wire is now all connected. I don't know if you can see down there in that jumble of wires. The line from the battery is this one right here. It's connected up to the starter motor. There's a little thin black wire just running next to it. It's for the starter solenoid. The other line that once I get some cable to run it is this, this line here. This one actually feeds power to the fuse box, the alternator feeds back into here as well so i'll have to get some more line and um join it up and it'll run through that same hole down the bottom i am getting a grommet for that i haven't just got it yet but it's going to look really really schmick once that all gets done oh before i forget it wasn't just the dashboard that i did the other day fixed up our silver bolts that were on our um door cars i put some nice black aluminium dome head bolts right through there so I don't know if over in the other side it's got them as well I don't know, even know if you can see them over there but it blends in really really nicely gives it a nice clean look so that's another little job ticked off our list but yeah we'll get um, this line I have got the holes drilled for the um, battery bracket I jumped underneath there and just to double check everything was alright and it fits in Lovely, nicely like that. Uh, there's two holes, these two holes across there. Maybe a bit of trouble getting the um, the bolts and the nuts through, but I think we should be all right. And obviously then the this full river battery will then sit underneath there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the uh, terminal post in there, mock it up, see how it looks, try and get a length for our cable. Now that I've got it connected to the starter motor, I can get a some sort of decent length. I'm going to end up with a little bit left over, which might be really good anyway. And then I'll just a bit of spare. And then I'll um, get it cut and then I'll just put a, another terminal on the end. Um, and I won't mount it all just yet because I'm going to run the, um, run the, the earth back through back onto the battery just for the moment until I get some other or well, until I get the um, battery isolator which hopefully fingers crossed is not too far away While I'm at this guys, if you have any questions about this build or anything like that, it's the neighborhood kids runs down the street. Make sure you shoot me a message. Um, and uh, I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, I've been a bit swamped with work given all our learning has gone online for various reasons mainly a little coronavirus but um yeah if you can if you got any questions shoot me a, shoot me a message and i'll get to it as soon as i can that looks not too bad Negative. Negative goes on this side. Come out to help me, Zebby. Oh, I'm just going in here. Just come and have a look, have you? 
No, you're coming in there. You're coming in, are you? Yeah, coming in there. You got pants on? Yeah, I'm clothes. Okay. I'm glad. Why? Everyone, this is my son Zebediah. Zeb, how old did you just turn recently? Uh, five. Five? Do you like this race car? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just not worried about very big spikes when I was little. He told me about a big spike came on your car and bang. Going to go in the garage. Big spiders, huh? All right, you know what this is? What? A battery. Battery. Yeah. What's it do? It keeps the car going. It starts the car, keeps it going. Mm. It means I can race. Um, uh, how do you race it even faster? How do you get it fast? How do I get it fast? Mm. Oh, by spending a lot of time behind the steering wheel practicing. Ah! Are you breaking my battery? No, I'm just trying to put it on. All right. All right. New day, guys. We have our battery here mounted in the car. There is, it is nicely bolted down. What I did today is I went to Super Cheap. It was open. It's public holiday today. It was open. And I just got a bit of a, a decent size cable there to earth the battery um, to the chassis, which will make it everything work properly. And then I picked up some decent sized cable here to run to the fuse box so I've got this um, this cable here get rid of that cable there and then this red cable will join up to it um, this is a really thick gauge cable I think it's up to rate right up to 125 amps so more than enough for this project and then we'll run it um, more than likely around the back with the cable for the starter solenoid and then down to the hole and it'll match up with the red cable from the battery to the starter motor and I'll run that through there I still have to put a grommet on it but I, I can do that later on it won't take too much and then that should be fine at the moment I've got I took the red cable that was on the starter to begin with using it as a ground but since I've replaced um, the ground on the back of the car we have our original ground cable back so I'm going to swap those back out <clears throat> make it all neat, nice and neat and tidy get that taken care of and then um, it should be good to start but in the meantime we just need to get this uh, cable for the fuse box lined up I'm going to run it straight back down the guts of the car with the um, cable for the starter motor and I might even try and put it in this in the same um, eye terminal as well just to make it nice and neat so we'll get this done this up we'll run this line first same way we ran the um, other one and then uh, get it all mounted up there so what we might do that's it. camera down there like that we will run it straight up behind like so Up and then back onto here. Okay, so we have hooked up our power feed to the fuse box. It's just sitting around there on top of the uh, starter solenoid cable. It's got it wrapped up neatly. Just sit underneath there like that. And I have our cables running down the middle down here. Be nice. And neat, I'll tidy those up in a, a little bit 
a little bit. And to our battery box, into our battery. So I have starter motor, fuse box, earth. It should now all be ready and sweet to go to try and start this thing up and see if it all works. I have our trusty key. Ignition, which I'll be changing over shortly. Let's see. Magic! Worked very, very well. I'll turn this off before all my tools vibrate off the back of the car. Wonderful. So that all works nicely. Now it's time to get the um, ignition. All right, so we're going to get the uh, get this steering lock out. So we've got to take the whole steering shaft or steering arm out. Um, four bolts, two there, two down there, and we're just going to disconnect it. Uh, probably just there, I'd say. We'll have a look when we drop it down. Oh, we've just got a bit of a towel down here to protect the, f uh, the floor. So, I'll see if I can do this. Probably should have done this when I put the um, dashboard in, but I just wasn't thinking, to be honest. Because I was just wanting to get the dashboard in and uh, not have to worry about anything else. I was just keen to get it in to see what it looked like. There we go. All right, it is out. And now, these two screws there with shear points. We have to somehow get those out, which I have a plan, and then um, take the steering lock out and then put it back together. And then on this side, to chop these wires off, getting ready for the ignition switch to go in. Alright, so here we go. Uh, accessories for all your wipers stuff like that, your ignition barrel, which we won't be needing that anymore, so I've taken it out. And I've also just had the Dremel and just cut some slots across those bolts there that snap off. And if we get a screwdriver, which hopefully it works, look at that, out they come. I was gonna use an easy out, but I really didn't just wanna just drill straight into them because I will reuse these. And this one, let's hope this one works. There we go. And once they come out, that pops off, that comes out, and there's our, our lock pin that we have to get out. So we'll get that out, then we put it back together, and then we can take this uh, barrel out there as well, because we won't be needing that, because we have our Ignition switch going in. And that is now done. I've got that lock pin out. I won't show the underside because there's an absolute schmozzle underneath there. Actually, went to drill a hole underneath. Um, and drilled it in the wrong hole or in the wrong spot. Oh, I'll show you. Drilled in the wrong spot and then just had to move it over there. And the pin fell out and so did all the other stuff. Um, so, I don't need the ignition barrel anymore. Um, don't need the uh, ignition, which is this part. I'll just cut those lines off so I can um, get them set up for our ignition switch, which is the next thing to wire up. So before I reinstall the... Um, steering column I will trim these off and get them situated ready to put on our 
new Greyston starter. Okay, so this is our ignition harness here. We've got three, oh sorry, one, two, three, four, six wires. Okay, obviously your big thick one here would be constant power. It's a blue, uh, black with a blue trace on it. That's constant power to the ignition, which will attach that for the moment, but we'll be taking it off when our uh, battery isolator comes in, and I'll explain that very shortly. Next, we have our blue, which is um, our ignition, and this one is black, yellow, and then there's also a black red, which is that one there, uh, that one there, that is to our starter motor, a black white is another ignition, and then a blue and red is also going to um, accessories or uh, things like that, so it's three to accessories, two to the starter, and one constant power. Now, when you get your Greyston starter switch, which this beautiful unit here, it already comes essentially half pre-wide. Now, we do have a light on the on the front there, which we may just need to extend one of those. That one of those is a ground for it to work. But it does come with your instructions there on how to wire it up. But also, they absolutely do you a massive favour by coming with a wiring harness. Now, it looks like an absolute jumble of cords down here. But if you look closely at your um, instructions here, the black connects up to your toggle switch. Now if you have a look at the black on the end that connects up, so I get it untangled from all this from the yellow one, it comes like that. So you can see that on the back, this would connect up to this top one here. This would then connect up to your switch. All right, the red is your constant power coming in. Uh, constant power coming in. And yellow is to the push button to your starter motor. Um, for your ignition, when you push it in, it sends, the, sends it out to the ignition. Now, we'll connect up this red for the moment, which we're gonna have to use, but when we get our um, our battery isolator, one of the beautiful things is that I've explained earlier is that once you push the button and, and trigger it, cuts the ground to the battery, cuts the circuit, but it also will then cut um, power to the ignition. So our constant power to our ignition switch. So on our harness here, that's our constant power right there. We'll hook it up for the moment Eventually, we will disable it or take it off and just put a bit of um, put some shrink wrap over it to really just isolate it out because we won't be needing that. We will be needing these other five when our isolator switch comes in. But at the moment, we will hook up this one, our constant power, so we can start the car if we need to. But eventually, the isolator will then run straight to um, the ignition. So once you trigger the, one of the two buttons that it comes with, it will cut to the cut the ignition um, and stop the car. And it also grounds out the belt, or cuts the circuit to the battery, um, so it isolates the battery at the same time. So we're going to start wiring this up. Um, I'm going to wire it out of the car just to make it a lot easier because we can then just go in and just plug it straight in. I'm not going to mount it any place just yet because I'm not too sure where I want to do it. The beautiful thing is, is that once all these wires are connected up, um, they're all just spade terminals and a few screws. So um, you can just pull it apart, move it around where you want to, and then uh, connect it up where you want to put it. So let's start getting these, uh, all these joined up, which I am, should be a fairly easy, just follow the instructions and it should be a fairly simple process. Okay, steering column is back in. 
it's all bolted up nice and tight I'm not too worried about that junk under there you can barely see it now accessories here are all buckled up so I'll just figure out a way to keep them nice and tight there somehow now it's time to plug this bad boy in see if we can get this car fired up since we've got the new battery installed it should be a fairly easy process I haven't connected up our ground wire I did it in green because I've had got black red and yellow on this wiring already and green for ground made sense to me so we'll wire it up plug it in and um, see she'll fire up all right guys we have our ignition switch plugged into our harness over there it's a bit of a mess of wires our ground wire just to ground it out somewhere at the moment we'll just ground it out to one of the bolts on the shifter just to hold it there just to make sure it fires up crossing our fingers don't have to chase my tail for some electronic work well that's a good sign We've got a red light meaning ignition on let's see if she'll fire up Woo! look out good times shuts down perfectly back on fires up lovely Would you have a look at that? Beautiful. All right. Well, as you can see, that wiring was very, very easy. This Grayston uh, ignition um, switch or starter, if you have the chance to get it, it's about 60 bucks. It's not cheap. Um, but worth its weight in gold makes life very very easy especially with this wiring harness with everything connected all you literally do is just connect your ignition harness up to it plug your wires in and away you go so nice one I'm really really happy with that lights on and it's consistent very very good all right, everyone, that'll do it for today. I've got to go spend some time with the family. I think we're going down to the beach, which is lovely. But I'm super happy with how this uh, this ignition switch came out, um, how the batteries come out. I've got the ignition lock. Uh, not the ignition lock, the steering lock out. It is really now starting to take shape and look like a race car. So... Um, Next next uh, video, I think I might I think I might make up that um, center part there for the ignition switch to go on. What I will do is too is I'll link the parts um, for the for the starter and the battery and the and the um, bracket and the cradle um, down below in the description. They all came from Motorsport Parts Australia. Uh, they got it to me shipped up really really quickly. I think I ordered them um, on like a Thursday and they got up here to me I think on a Tuesday so when you're talking about uh, Melbourne to Townsville in the middle of COVID-19 and coronavirus and how many people are doing online shopping and the and all that stuff mate it's it was pretty quick so super stoked with them you ready for the beach Apparently we're ready for the beach. So I'll leave it there. I will uh, see you guys very, very soon.